So this is my friend, uh, Mr. Spears' truck. Uh, he had it in storage up in Julian for almost a year, and uh, he went to go drive it back to my house. And we're at our, my house right now, and, and uh, he had to have it towed here because uh, it wasn't running right. His complaint is that it had no power, and it was hesitating, bucking, pinging, making all kinds of noise, and just had no power. So we're gonna make a very short video of a complaint and then we're going to find out the cause and then we're going to tell what tell you what the correction is it's real simple but basically we didn't know what the problem was going to be it was it, he towed it here he, he's going on a long trip across country and we needed to figure out what it is and that's what this video is about okay so the first thing we need to know is what kind of truck we have we have a dodge ram 1500 series to the 2000 model year so it's a 2000 it's a 5.2 liter engine we have a vacuum hose problem we would need to go through this so what we're worried about is that this is your air cleaner this had a rat's nest underneath it and there was all kinds of rat uh, feces around the motor and rat feces inside the car up here so we know we have a problem with rats in the in a rural community and what they do is they like to eat wires specifically they like they do like eating spark plug wires okay spark plug wires any kind of wire they'll try to eat and they'll make their nest out of and so we need to go and figure out well what do these rats do because he already cleaned out the nest out underneath here so we know it's no longer an air filter restriction. So the air filter is right inside here. You just unclip this. And then the air filter is right inside here. Okay. Which is you have to do a, another screw. So anyways, the first thing we need to do is uh, hook up a scanner. We have a scanner over here. Okay. So this is the Vera scanner. We're going to hook that up to the data light connector in the car. Because uh, we know the check engine light's on. And see what the code is. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open the door. We're gonna hook up our data link connector right here. It's a trapezoid connector. Uh, uh, we're gonna, it's usually within reach of the driver underneath the steering wheel. See the data link connector because he had this bracket here, but the data link connector is right there. And that uh, plugged in and a good something that's good is you wanna see a green dot right here on the data link connector. Uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, so that way we know we have power going to that connector. I'm gonna put my key in the ignition And I'm gonna turn it to what we call key on engine off So I'm gonna turn it all the way on until the dash lights are on so show the dash lights The dash lights are on but the engine is not running notice the uh, No RPM so it's key on engine is off and we're ready now to use the scanner So we hit this all right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit this button right here, the power button, turn that on. And it's a touch screen, so we're gonna use our uh, uh, stylus to turn this on. Let's see. You gotta hold it down for a few seconds. So it has to load up windows, just let it run. You don't have to touch anything on the screen. A lot of times it will ask you questions, just ignore it. Okay, so here's the windows. When you shut this down, never shut it off here. Shut it off at windows right here. So this is how you turn the machine off. You never turn it off with this button. So you would hit this button right here, and then you hit shut down when you turn this machine off. Okay. Okay, so here's the main menu. We want to go to scanner. And what we're trying to do is is pull the, the diagnostic treble codes, the DTCs, and see what a problem is. We know we're a Dodge. We know that we are a 2000, but we could do it through the VIN number if we want. So the 10th digit of the VIN would tell us that it was a, a 2000, and the 10th digit would be a Y. Okay, we do not want to do automatic ID because you have to be like 2006 and newer to use that. So it's a manual ID. And then um, this is asking what kind of vehicle. It's a Ram truck, 
but you could identify it with the VIN number, the fifth digit here. And then we know that it's a 5.2 liter. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and hit okay. And then we're gonna hit engine, okay. And then hit all others. We, it's not a California car, it's a federal car. And then automatic uh, transmission with air conditioning is what we have. Okay, so here's our codes. And we're gonna do codes only. And here's our codes right here. Here's all the codes we have. So we have a multiple misfires, a cylinder number four misfire, cylinder number six, cylinder number eight, and we have a TP sensor uh, uh, code. So let's go ahead and diagnose this TP uh, sensor first. So I'm gonna hit back. I want to hit back and I want to go to live data display. So live data display allows us to look at the live data. Now the computer is on and the truck is live. It's getting ready. To, you're about ready to start the vehicle. So all we're focusing on is TP sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and pull here's throttle position sensor opening. I'm going to open that and then I go to TPS voltage. This is the most important one. Now I'm gonna go over to our throttle position, zoom in on this over here. You see my hand right there, okay? And I'm gonna slowly accelerate this all the way to wide open throttle, WOT, and then I'm gonna slowly accelerate this back down to zero. And let's look and see if we created a graph. So now I can look at my TP sensor and I'm moving the throttle back and forth. And I can see if this throttle is working properly. And I, I'm just varying the throttle now. I'm gonna go to wide open throttle right here, see if it spikes. I'm gonna hold it right there. And then I'm gonna slowly come down. And you can see what I'm doing with my hand right here. I'm slowly letting it go down. And I'm just checking to make sure I have a good signal coming from my TP sensor. So go back to the signal. And I'm gonna go all the way back down to closed throttle. Stop, or play. Okay, so a bad TP sensor would have a little glitch right here. Uh, kind of similar to what I have here. It would drop off on a signal, but instead when I came down, it's smooth. The only thing I don't like is the most we have is 3.67 volts. TP sensors run between 0.5 volts and 4.5 volts. So my worry here is that the computer cannot see wide open throttle like it should, because wide open throttle, it should have gone all the way up to 4.5 volts, and that closed throttle, it should be... F so I'm not happy with that, and there's possibility a rat or a mouse could have ate a, a damaged a wire for the TP sensor. This is the TP sensor, so it's opposite. My hand was over here moving the throttle body. This is the TP sensor right here on the throttle body, and I'm just inspecting the wires and see as much as I can. It doesn't look like I see any damage. I can't really tell all the way back here, but um, let's see. I'm just looking at the wires. I don't see anything chewed up. So I'm gonna move on to the misfires, okay? All right, so now we need to get to what we call a misfire counter. So we're gonna check, we're gonna start the car and then we're gonna go and check for misfires. Okay, so I'm gonna hit back. And then if you look at it, uh, let's see, it is under system test. So we have codes over here. We could clear the codes. I don't wanna clear the codes yet. We have the data display, which we just used for the TP sensor. Uh, we could reset the memory. Functional test is when we can control things, but I want to look at a uh, misfire counter right here. And it's really handy because it's going to tell us what, what cylinders are misfiring. Right now they're at zero because we're not running the car. We need to identify now what kind of ignition system it is.
We have spark plug wires right here. Spark plug wires tell us that it's a DIS system or distributor system. It is not a coil on plug system. And if I find the coil, and the coil is right here, I have a single coil. So that single wire off of this coil has to go to a distributor. And if we follow that wire all the way back, it goes all the way back to a distributor. And you look at it, this is the distributor and all the spark plug wires attach to that distributor. Let me see if I can move it out of the way. There we go. See all the spark plug wires attached to it? Okay, so we know it's a distributor ignition system. Okay, so we're gonna start the car. And notice the check into lights on. That's the orange light. You can hear the misfire, okay? You hear a thump, 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 thump. That's a misfire. It's a dead miss right now at idle. I'm gonna give it a little bit of gas so we can hear it. You, get, you see that's shaking. The whole car is just shaking. You can feel it in your body. You can feel it in the, in the, whole, the whole body of the car. It's shaking, it's not happy, okay? It's like a heartbeat. Alright, so when we started, this was all at zeros. We saw that. And look, in a, in a minute and a half, I already have 255 misfires on cylinders four and cylinders number eight. Okay, so we have misfires already counting. Plus, we have a few misfires on 12 and a few misfires on eight. I, I anticipate that, those, that a rat or a mouse ate some of these wires and they're shorting out and there's a simple trick to find it so i want to clear the codes we already looked at the uh the misfire counter so i want to clear the codes i go back to this menu screen uh you have to have key on engine off we just tried to do it with the key on engine run it wouldn't let us so key on engine off and hit yes and then that will erase dtc's the reason why we want to do this is we want to see if the codes come back Okay, so I'm gonna, first off, I'm gonna go over to uh, system tests and I'm gonna bring up the misfire counter again. They're all at zero, so you stay here. Okay, and I'm gonna go and start it and I'm gonna see how fast those come back. And you can see it's already climbing, okay? So we erased the code, which set all these to zero. Now they're starting to climb. All right, so here's my trick. We have a code for misfire. We know we have multiple cylinders misfiring on the scanner. And we know that we have mice and rats that have eaten some wire. So your trick is to use a water bottle and you're gonna spray all the wires. And I'm just spraying the wires looking for sparks. And I'm gonna spray on the top of the distributor back here. And you should see it start to misfire. This wire oh multiple look at that one two I saw a third one there per second multiple misfires so those wires are all eaten up if you put your hand back there right now you'd be uh, getting shocked with probably 12 to 20,000 volts there's the third one and you can see the camera shaking because I have my hand on the motor so you can feel the motor shaking for these misfires. So the, the, what it means is the, the spark is not going down to our spark plugs right here. The spark is going directly to ground right at the distributor. So the spark is not even getting to the spark plugs. All right, so to simplify this, complaint cause correction. The complaint was they left it out in uh, Julian and it sat for a year. He knew he had mice and rats that were living on it. 
and when he drove it to my house actually he had to have it towed because it had no power it was bucking and surging and he, he didn't know it was a misfire uh, but it was obviously a misfire and all my students should know what a misfire is so bucking surging no power misfiring check engine light on that's the complaint okay what's the uh, what was the cause the cause was he had a code for a TP sensor and multiple misfires we identified the misfires as the spark plug wires we still don't know about the TP sensor yet but we're gonna fix what we do know is wrong which is the misfires with the spark plug wires so the cause is the spark plug wires were eaten by the mouse or the rat and cause that causes the misfires the correction is going to be to replace the spark plugs and the wires because he doesn't know when he changed his last time he changed the spark plugs he's driving across country so let's just change all the wires let's change all the spark plugs and then we'll drive it and then we'll, we'll focus on the TP sensor if that is a problem we could also check to see if the specifications for the TP is four and a half volts for this vehicle maybe it is three and a half most TP sensors, it should be up to four and a half, but we will do that after we fix what we know is already wrong. Okay, so we uh, changed spark plug wires on the top of the, uh, on, a, on both banks and uh, all the way to the distributor in the back. Uh, we got the firing order off. Uh, that's why we're going to use, uh, used, we used the map uh, of the firing order. Uh, to uh, get the firing order right so it took us two tries uh, the first try we were off and the uh, vehicle would idle too low would, instead of a thousand R or eight, 900 rpm it idled at like 550 and then as soon as you accelerated it would backfire so here's the firing order uh, that we used uh, 18436527 uh, the most important thing about this is where the number one cylinder is in relationship to the motor, but more importantly, where the number one cylinder is in relationship to the distributor. So that everything starts with the one, and then you route the numbers accordingly. Uh, we took a, a picture of it, and we were able to mark the number one tower uh, right here. Okay. Right. Yeah, oh, right here. So once we knew what the number one uh, tower was for the distributor, then it was one, eight, and then it just went down. Yellow was just four. Yeah. Okay. So the wires that we pulled, and you see uh, very clearly where the mouse or rat uh, chewed the end of these and frayed them. They act co completely uh, severed. Uh, two of them were completely three. severed. Three of them. So there's our three misfires that we uh, had. Uh, the other ends, everything else about the wires is fine. It's just that a mouse uh, ate through this. Okay, and since we're changing the wires, we changed the plugs as well. Okay, so as soon as we got the firing order right, that solved all the misfires. But now we have a problem with, uh, we want to address the TP sensor. So the TP sensor is right here. We unplug the TP sensor and we turn the ignition key on. We're not getting above three and a half volts ever at wide open throttle. So we're gonna bridge these two watt tabs, and it's the top ones, right there. And then if you look at the voltmeter, we got five volts. So it's this, we're measuring VREF. So if we got five volts going to the TP sensor and we have a good ground, which we do, the only thing it can be is the TP sensor is failing inside. Because when we went for a test drive, this never got over three. Point six seven. Huh? Six seven. Three point six. Three point six seven. So we need to replace this TP sensor. Go for a drive, and at wide open throttle, it should be four and a half volts, and at closed throttle, it should be 0.5 and it should be smooth. Here's what our uh, diagnostics look like. Uh, so we went for a test drive, and you could see we accelerated three times. And uh, it got up to 3.67 roughly, 6.9. And then, uh, uh, but we never got the flat full throttle. So this will give them a lot more horsepower. And it will also allow the transmission to downshift properly if it's necessary.